Happening now, thousands of refugees stranded at Turkey's border with Greece. The Turkish president said he would not stop migrants from crossing into Europe, but Greece is refusing to let them in. CNN's Aura Damon is live in Istanbul. And, and Darwa, you've, uh, you've been shining a light on the plight of these people caught in the middle of all this conflict. Yeah, John, we spent the weekend up there, and President Erdogan is basically saying to the West, you have not taken on a share of this burden. Now the borders are open, and you are going to be forced to take on your share of the refugee burden. But on the ground, this is how it is impacting the lives of those migrants and refugees stuck on the Turkish side of the border. They just spent a night cold and wet out in the open. And for what? A sliver of hope sparked by Turkey saying it would no longer stop refugees crossing to Europe and facilitating their transport here to the border with Greece. Abdullah is the sole survivor of a bombing that killed the rest of his family in Syria. They thought it was open. They thought the whole border was open. It's not. Greece is not letting anyone through. But it's quite chaotic. It's quite intense. People are just trying to bust through towards what they think is going to be a better life. Europe doesn't want them, never really has, striking a financial aid deal with Turkey back in 2016 that it never fully paid up on to stem the refugee flood. Turkey, hosting upwards of 3.5 million refugees, mostly from Syria, has long threatened to open the gates if left to shoulder the refugee burden alone. And now, Turkey is even more angered by the West's refusal to support it in Idlib with anything more than rhetoric. Many here are aware they are being used as leverage. The tear gas wafts over and mixes with smoke from multiple fires as those here try to stay warm. Samira's husband was killed in Iraq by ISIS. She came to Turkey with her children, elderly mother and disabled brother. Where are we supposed to go then, she wonders. This Syrian mother doesn't want to talk. When we ask how she's doing, she just strokes her child's face. It's all horribly reminiscent of the desperation we witnessed years ago as throngs cross through Europe. At night, we meet some of those who tried to cross the river to Greece, but failed. Greek authorities deny this, but Khalid from Idlib says the Greeks forced him back, tore up his ID, and took his phone. He hasn't spoken to his parents in almost four weeks. And they're in Idlib, they're in the camps. He's worried about them. And now he has no way of getting in touch with them. This family from Afghanistan says the same thing happened to them. But even worse, they were separated from their men. Her father, uh, your brother, uh, her husband. Uh, okay are over there, and you're stuck here. They are scared, vulnerable, alone, burning discarded clothing, not knowing where to go or how to find those they love. What are they supposed to do when their misery and desperation has become little more than a political weapon? What are they supposed to do indeed, Arwa? And once again, I think it's so important for you to shine the light and show people what's happening here. And it's so interesting to hear from them, so many of them thinking, their hearts are still back in Syria or Afghanistan or where they're coming from, but they're thinking about the future. Where do they want to get to? What's the end goal? Uh, they want to get to Europe. They want to basically get to a country where they'll be able to build a better life. Look, many of those people who you saw there have actually been in Turkey for a few years, but they're saying that Trying to survive in Turkey is very difficult for them at this stage. It's hard for them to find employment, put their kids in school. It's hard for them to find housing. Turkey has been feeling the effect of bearing the bulk of the burden of the refugee crisis, plus it its economy has been in a downward spiral and prices have been going up. That's one contributing factor. But the other also uh, is that right now, as you saw in that report, Turkey is using these refugees as leverage against Europe. While we're up at the border, you do see them being encouraged into certain directions to go and try and get across at this part of the border fence or to try this part of the river. The problem is that we talked to a number of them who say they actually did make it across, but then were forced back by 
the Greeks. So right now they're really stuck in this uh, stage of limbo, not knowing how long they should wait out in the open, how long should they force their children and themselves to suffer like this before all hope is gone. They're really being played right now by all sides.